I would like to make you get acquainted with Armin Pialek, Senior Project Manager IAC Berlin. Armin will talk with us in Russian. Thank you very much, Armin, for your Russian language. And he will tell us about the examples of how the volunteers make an influence on the life in the cities in Europe. Ar Armin, the floor is yours. I would like to start with the general question how the uh, company may uh, support the non-commercial organization. There are different possibilities, different opportunities. On one side, it's the money or financial resources. You can give the volunteers other resources like computers, laptops. That's one way. Another one is, and we talk about the volunteers, you can help with your with your program software human resources you can give the hands these are the people who will help i don't know in the cities to to clean the park or to paint the walls in the kindergarten some volunteer projects with the hands then also we have the volunteer projects where you must uh, have the competence and the talents of the uh, professional knowledge and skills like a juridical expert who helps with juridical questions, the expert in marketing, in the sphere of marketing consult, and that helps in the questions of consulting for non-commercial organizations. And uh, when I was asked to talk about the volunteers in city, I, I started to think who are our volunteers in the cities. I don't know who here is in the audience today, but uh, let's say that there is a big business and big companies and uh, these are uh, specialists in the cities and we have a study all over the world, but in the cities mainly we meet most of, I found the word white colors. White, white collars, yes, yes, we have the word, the definition white collars, these are people who are professional service, these this are not the blue collars, these are not the workers, they're not uh, with a handwork, but they are the specialists in some field, and you need to understand that if they live in the city, it's a huge pool of knowledge, which you need somehow to activate for non-commercial segment. And I did uh, this uh, comparison, if we talk about the volunteers, you can uh, you can uh, use their hands or their knowledge. And with the hands, it's quite often it's uh, quite difficult now because of coronavirus. Because if you work with the hands, you need to meet people, you need to keep the distance, hygiene issues, and all this. Now, in the present situation, it's uh, quite difficult. And this is what we see in Berlin. There are almost no programs like this um, because you cannot just meet people if, uh, if it's not an urgent issue. And if the corona, when it will be away, of course, uh, we need to continue help with our hands. It's uh, funny, it's interesting. That's a good experience also for, for the team. Uh, for teamwork, yes, for team spirit, in order to get acquainted more between each other and to get acquainted with non-commercial organizations, because what we know, it's different languages in non-commercial seg segments than in the business. And another side, when we work with the hands, the sustainability of influence, 
is not as long as in other forms of volunteership. If we if we clean the parks, maybe next day it will be dirty once again. That's a good example. That's a nice example. And if we look at the volunteers, which which need our knowledge and expertise, which we have with the team, but the influence is more long term ship. And we talk about uh, some object, some project likes to establish the strategy for the non-commercial organization to establish to make new website, new marketing issue, and. We talk also about the mission vision statement. What is our mission? This are consultant services. We talk about the juridical juridical uh, support and also the influence uh, long term. But uh, pro bono, all the company, uh, these expertises are not for everyone because not all the companies would like to do it. Maybe some of them, and we found also that. Uh, there are a lot of people who want to participate and you need to make a good successful project which which takes the working competence you need more resources than for example for the project where we work with hands why it is like this we need more preparatory work more management in time and during the project and um, some of you Inga, I watch. I look at you. SAP uh, does a lot of such projects where you uh, need uh, more management than handwork. And I'm quite fast. I would like uh, briefly to talk about the principles of the good uh, pro bono projects. Five. Uh, Principle that's very simple. The first uh, principle, this is first, if we start such a project, first of all, we need to define and know the demands of the non-commercial organization about what and what we'll work with, what is our main uh, question on its necessity of non-commercial organization. If we know this, then it's easy to find the internal resources which it may help us. This is the second principle to find the appropriate resources. The experts which mm, which can answer this question. Then is it uh, is it realistic about the pro bono volunteer projects uh, than other any type of business. This is quite important. This is the second principle. And then we have a training of both ways. It's not like the business helps non-commercial organization because I think that a non-commercial organization also helps the business because we need to find the common language to make new experience in other sphere. And this is very important to understand how how both uh, sides make uh, support for each other and also another interesting point is that um, we need to when how it is in uh, definition to behave yourself as if non-commercial organization is the uh, customer because the quality of these projects is uh, should be very high only because of this, they will be successful. That's why I think it's a very important principle. And is it a customer or non-commercial organization? You don't need to split like this. And and these uh, principles, which I can send you later, you can read it in the Powered by Pro Bono. This is the book uh, which may be known for you. I think that uh, Anastasia knows this. And of course, as uh, summing up of all these ideas, I would like to say that you need to focus on on the direct uh, direct control. You need to focus on the on the expertise talents of your volunteers. Second is if we make such projects, they need a lot of management resources, and I'm and I advise you and I recommend you to work with the subcontractors. I know that in Russia, good or good, 
in Cape Cup Moscow and they help the companies uh, to make such projects more successful and the third point which I also would like to say that I like it but I rarely see this and this forum for the volunteers it's crucially important and we need more to think about how we different companies can cooperate with each other and uh, such an example I know that in Germany uh, BMW works together and open for programs for for BMW and for our company, I think that it's a good example if we make a collaboration and cooperation more often, that will be beneficial for both sides. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Armin. And we have such a form. We have National Council on the Corporative Volunteership and we have a lot of regional councils where on the level of regions, the teams of different business unify in order to implement different uh, programs and in reality this movement and even uh, we have cases when the volunteers became the establishers of non-commercial organizations in order on a systematic level to solve this or that task because uh, seeing uh, problem points in the city they understand that this is not just a volunteers activity this must be a decision of the problems on the system level and like this they started to solve the problem and also from the teams which help to unify the volunteers. This is a platform about pro-charity and in Russia it is very active and it's continued to develop especially in the pandemic time and in fact uh, this movement to the professional also volunteers activity it is a very important uh, movement and in our cities uh, there are a lot of uh, blue collars uh, workers that's another direction of work there are, there are a lot of different interesting projects and among the blue collars in our company in metal invest the team uh, studies the uh, lean uh, production they decided to make the training for the school for the schools and they invent the project together with the school with the pupils how to make the small improvements local improvements and on their level this is what Inga was talking about thank you very much Armin and we move to metal industry company which works mainly in Russia so the main driver is the Russian territory. I'd like to turn the floor to Ludmila Gusev, the deputy of the uh, head of the Department of Communication and Work with Investment, the Council of the General Director of Division Severstal Russian Steel, Severstal. Ludmila, the floor is yours. Ludmila will tell us about the examples, how the company Severstal involved the volunteers in the city changes. And we know that Mono City is these are the cities where such drivers are necessary so the floor is yours Ludmila good day that's a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you and we have today a snowy time on the street so now it's not a gray sky and we try what uh, we uh, we try to do what our moderators spoke about uh we don't have much time that's why i turn directly to the cases just one second let me launch my presentation because it seems to me that that's the most interesting and important in uh cherepovets city i will uh, speak mainly about the city of cherepovets this is a mono city and it stays as a mono city most of the ratings we are in the top 10 mono cities of uh, cities of Russia and one of the criteria is the establishment of this friendly environment in the city. Definitely uh, the city cannot be friendly if you don't have the friendly people who are ready to support to ready to face the challenges and help and in our company we have a lot of volunteers we have a lot of initiatives and the most important is that and you uh, maybe remark yourself that the people uh, develop more and more the necessity in the volunteership and they uh, claim openly and that's why you need to or uh, have to arrange and to give the resources in order to start mm 
that's why uh, very uh, the, a lot of different volunteer initiatives we implement in the program Road to Home. This is the volunteer program of Severstal in different cities. It started in Cherepovets, but we have also a separate initiative, which I would like uh, to talk about and which I would like to concentrate on. Now, the previous speaker also spoke about the pro bono project, how it is interesting for people to implement the initiatives in the volunteer project. So we have uh, this possibility uh, two big uh, volunteer projects which I would like to talk about as my cases because they work several years each and we have the fear of the ideas and this is the gathering of initiatives from the company they share their ideas and thoughts they get uh, marks uh, depending on the level of importance and uh, possibility of this improvement, so big or small improvements, nevertheless. But uh, the initiatives from upside and the people can spend this uh, things to whatever. On the portal, there is internet shop, as we can call it, and there is a part called to spend on the volunteer project and and the fair project and more and popular people use this option uh, we implement the activity and uh, we invite the participants where we implement this initiative and this is very touching story and after this and after this the amount of those who need it even more uh why it is so important because many workers would like to uh, participate in the good uh, but not always um, to participate and the company gives them possibility and uh, now we purchase the uh, the uh, equipment big amounts of different products and uh, for the car, uh, for the school, for the truck, in order they to learn uh, how to drive because they have a speciality in this special school, special course for uh, girls. We buy the tables for, uh, uh, for cutting uh, of the clothes. And this is the fabric of ideas, the factory of ideas. And also we have the run of the good repair our workers who make repair and cosmetic repair in um, for the families with difficult financial situation. This project is in the final uh, competition of uh, volunteer of Russia, and we hope for victory. Anyway, we work not for the sake of this. And this is a very popular project, and it uh, won. Uh, we have a final event with the best implemented projects and one of the nominations is which is about the kindness about what we do for the city for its development and in this nomination the project of the good repair of apartments one one more project which seriously changed uh, the outlook of the city and the relations of people uh, because you know that uh, Cherpovets is a hockey city the city which have a hockey team for a long period of time and together with Cherpovets Metallurgy Factory we have also a hockey team and that's why that was the initiative that was the initiative of our factory and of Silver Stalin, they gave a good example. They invested their meanings, and so the previous uh, reporter also made that uh, mentioned that there is a normal format of participation. And first, people who are disabled or limited with their possibilities, they wanted, for example, to read the hockey play, and then the next stage the workers of the company they claimed that they would like to participate in this project and they became these volunteers on the cars who started to um, uh, bring our people uh, who were in sitting at home alone you know that our cities unfortunately just start to adopt for people with um, uh, limited possibilities of their health 
and they became our regular guests at the hockey teams and this changes the environment of the hockey game and they treat we have uh, j mu uh, joint trainings. I know that I'm running out of time. I cannot show you the small movie, but it will be inside the presentation. If someone would like to watch it, you can later study. This is the most of successful cases in the last uh, period of time, which, which seriously changes the outlook of our city to the city for the comfort of living of people of different of uh, different status. And that also changes people who this... Um, who run this project actually. Ludmila, thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, some examples. Yes, we have an uh, example of pan in a pandemic time, but the most important cases I've told you about, I think that, I think that these volunteers, when they make this inclusive environment, when when no one decides to do uh, or to start some activity as the target support i see the volunteers with the bags with the food the supply for people who are in difficulties and i think that these small towns and moon cities it is so clear the difference between the cities which have this volunteer environment between the cities and uh, which don't have this and the volunteers write in the social networks and uh, that takes a new stage that's why This is a bright driver. And we move to other examples. And the examples of how the volunteers change the life of the cities. Evgenia Kuznetsova had prepared the presentation, Director of Development of Social, And we sit together in the studio, but on the social distance. And Anastasia, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for those who presented their practices and examples. And I would like to talk about the four cases of the foreign companies about how you should work in the community and how to launch uh, these processes in order to turn them into the systematic work and the systematic improvement in the cities of the presence and in the regions which for some reason became important for business. I would like to start with Syngenta. This is an agricultural company and in the frames of the corporate volunteer activity, they help the farmers in Bangladesh and for 14 days, the people in the team from different regions and cities arrive to Bangladesh and make mainly the educational program for the farmers about how to grow up, which uh, crops uh, to choose, how to establish the process in order to in order to be suppliers in the company and then to involve other farmers into in their region. And one of the interesting moments is that as the farmers get later more crops and after two weeks when the team um, uh, stay in Bangladesh, they stay in contact with the farmers within two months and they launch the process of the partnership and neighborhood when the farmers in cooperation with the team of the company later they can make a training of other farmers in their region and to develop the community of those who are ready to support each other and to cooperate not in the frames of one family or one small um, 
village but to go on the level of region and to establish a partnership and to get in the chain of supply as far as the teams are concerned and in place this is understatement of uh, the customers and the suppliers in the enlargement of the knowledge and skills and the general involvement into uh, the process of uh, of the company and the impact which they bring to the developing countries the next example is the financial company credit suisse uh, the volunteer uh, program and um, first is the education for the young and adults uh, for the youngs uh, from the developing countries this is uh, for the additional financial support for the education and that helps people to understand their financial system financial relations in order to feel more sure in the present world another block is the uh, is the humanitarian support which is dedicated to the regions mostly suffering from uh, from different emergency situations and the nature attacks and this is the third part of the work where the employees of the company themselves from different regions and countries gather and in the region where the uh, help was channeled they uh, actually help to construct the houses for the families which suffered due to this due to these natural diseases uh, due to the um, due to different natural uh, disasters and for those who move from the one territory to another then the employee can see how this charity from the companies find the feedback from the locals and uh, they make cooperation in order to understand the demand the necessity there may be possible partners and customers and uh, they also make a cross-cultural teams which helps to improve the understanding and cooperation between the offices in different countries the next case is the company nvidia they develop the technological solutions in the digital sphere and together with their main business activity they also make the educational programs for schoolmates and for the students or for for the youngs uh, from the poor regions and this program is divided in two blocks in two parts first this involvement into educational activity they make quite interesting because the employees in a very creative brainstorm gather different tasks of technological way and type what can you do out of the applied materials in order to understand uh, the new technological concepts and the second one uh, of course they make this workshops later for for the school for pupils for students for young generation the second direction is when the employees help to establish or improve the conditions of uh, studying process in school educational process in order to feel good at the school environment to be in a safe environment and um, the final case in the overview is the company Ford and uh, they have different initiatives which uh, they implement in the frame of the activity but I would like today to talk mainly about the months of the care which is in every September and if before pandemic that was uh, the direction of traditional volunteership which solved the problems of the local communities in different cities for example the construction of uh, the water pipe uh, in order to make people not to spend two hours to get the water and this is also uh, the playgrounds construction and the cafeterias in the places where people live in the it's a big interaction with the medical organizations and improvement of the uh, situation but due to the pandemic they didn't uh, leave the desire to help the local communities but they made it in other formats
and they can also apply for the grant. And this is the cooperation when they get the financial support and the mass media support and who could uh, who could also support intellectually. This is small things and this is also to call and to find out uh, what is with the health and to make the pro bono support and to make it in a social network. The company gives the voucher for $15, which can also donate to the organizations which company Ford helps in their activity. So this is reestablishing of the pandemic period, the social volunteer project. The companies do not leave people alone without any choice and to leave don't leave them without any support and also it helps the non-commercial organizations to be active thank you very much thank you very much Evgeny. and i like uh, very much the phrase about the economical effect uh, from the volunteers and the activity inga inga when talk about the sustainable smart city she mentioned that this is the synergy and uh, of social and ecological and economical uh, forms. If about the social, it's more or less clear about the uh, environment. It's also more or less close and clear about the economic effect of the volunteership. It's still a new terminology which may uh, occur in our reality and our volunteers may become a social entrepreneurs and on the whole they can develop the small business of the territories of non-commercial organizations and through their projects they can support the small business this is also very interesting i think that it's a perspective topic uh, what we for example now in studies didn't think about in russian studies i mean in russian reality and it seems to me that it's a very interesting topic for future discussions which we need to think about thank you very much once again evgeny and we uh, move to uh, Baikal uh, region. We move to Jana Medvedev, the leading specialist of the re region program of Bistrinsky Nornikel uh, factory. Jana, the floor is yours. Good day, dear friends. And uh, now I'm, I, I switch to my presentation just one second. My name is Shana Medvedeva and I am from Bistrinsky factory. Uh, this is Chita uh, and Baikal region. I would like to share my experience and to talk about how the corporative volunteer programs are implemented at our factory, which initiatives and projects are implemented by our employees and what does it mean for them. And I would like to talk a little bit about our Bistrinsky factory. This is the youngest uh, production activity of Nornikel, and it is uh, located in the Baikalsky uh, region. This is 500 kilometers, more than 500 kilometers from our city center of Chita. And it is in a very picturesque place among the hills. It is in the green belt in different uh, beautiful uh, species and we extract the crude and um, the gold concentrate in ore and we manage to join um, the combinate of the kindness we uh, participated in eco marathon uh, and uh, we started with the office employees and we didn't think even that this project will attract the interest to the employees who work uh, in a shift way i should mention that most of our employees work in a shift way and many many know what is the method of work it is when the person arrives to the working facility to the factory where is the production he lives and works in our case this is 30 days from seven o'clock in the morning up to seven o'clock in the evening people work and 30 days they move uh, they come back to home which can be activities if you have such attention 
uh, schedule and a tough schedule, but there are people who react to our initiatives and uh, they have an idea and interest to participate in this project. They joined us and we were happy. And you can see the dynamic. We don't have so many people. We are not so mature volunteers, but in comparison to previous periods, we look stronger, we look more effective and the interest it grows and in our teams there are a lot of because my colleagues on direction of cooperative volunteership they say that in our project there's a mainly girls participating but we mainly have in our volunteer team boys and i would like to tell you about our original experience and it is implemented based on the shift work when our people uh, when our workers have a relax after the production work also between the shifts when they arrive home and of course this is office employees who live and work in the chita uh, city i mainly will uh, talk about the things which are not brand new and they are obvious but this is our experience and we can make to this we came to this experience ourselves um, we fully understand this and of course we are not the first in the in this activities in the month of volunteer projects there are a lot of which implement the events festivals activities and lectures so what is our significant difference is that you can 100,000 times what is the, with the plastic and how much it is in the ocean and to scare with the fear of the burning of the dust and rubbish but if if you don't make the learning process it will only scare people and make a distance our purpose of volunteership is a partnership this is the accent mainly about with whom we do the projects and we have a lot of examples on the projects of uh, people started in 2018 they uh, developed the eco pathway in our park the next year it's more massive project on the improving of the facilities in the city parks And together with uh, other business, with the in meanings of information, and this is, and the people arrive from different corners of our country. They get the treatment, and this is very effective. But unfortunately, the territory, which is close to this city and uh, people this year paid attention and decided to improve they cleaned and they involved the locals to this facility and the locals started to make lean uh, treat lean and started to love this place in this this pupils make the excursions and the tours and our our employees make parallel education on uh, nature and park resources and of course we just not only talk about the secondary usage but we offer to implement and to establish the conditions for person to try to think about this is a very good project very beautiful cool project the previous year people arranged this is a garage sale the team of the blistering uh, factor together with activists from the uh, local locals made the garage sale on the decabrist uh, square it was inspired by the western countries experience there were more than thousand uh, people 45 partners and sellers 10% of the amount of money was sent to the charity. This was a foundation working with the kids with the cancer diseases. And 
every good uh, thing we gave a second life. And after the garage sale, people were inspired by this experience and carry out the um, party, echo, echo party, and that was really inspiring and with a deep sense. Also, um, we talk about the separate um, rubbish. We don't have the containers for this. We have only the containers for PET bottles and our guys offered such a solution. They uh, made the Chita city on the international, on the Russian recycle map, and they marked there the points about the points of, and explained our people about this map and people who sort out the rubbish, the garbage, and I think that they made a very important tank because the map is very in demand in Russia, and this is also the proudness that we became the first coordinators. And to finish my speech, I should say that it doesn't matter in which conditions we live, it doesn't matter in which situation we are now, which situation is now in our country and in the world. We are people with a good heart, people with a big soul, with open soul and heart, and our people, of course, will find the time always for the implementation of good and kind ideas and projects and will uh, help other people to follow, to support, and to make this world better a little bit even. That's it, and I, I told you about the corporate volunteers in the Eastern factory. Jeanne, thank you very much. I liked your first slide about that. If, if there is a life in a shift work, maybe it's not for everyone where the place where this is not the place for everyone because the city where the people live, this is the place where he arrives. And I think that maybe my European colleagues with support who often make trips and this is quite a traditional because not a place make the people or the person handsome but the person makes himself handsome with his good activities and this is not maybe a russian still attitude but that's really cool that you're the leaders and the starters of this movement and this is a uh, very interesting cultural activities. This is a culture which is created uh, inside the heart of people and it's very beautiful. Together with European colleagues, we also meet and talk many things for your case. And because we moved to East, let's move even more to East. We move into Japan and today we have invited our colleague uh, Sayumi Nisikawa, she's a project manager of Crossfields company, we'll have a translation and uh, we'll have a speech in English. Sayumi, she, she heard, uh, or maybe she, uh, I yes, hope that uh, she, Yes, yeah, thank you very you much. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Sayumi from Crossfields Japan. And uh, it's my honor to share the experience of corporate volunteering in Japan in front of this uh, great audience today. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about uh, Crossfield's corporate volunteering program and what we aim to achieve through this program by introducing one of our volunteer stories who worked for the urban project in Philippines. So first, let me introduce who we are and what we do. Uh, we are Crossfields, and we are a non-profit organization founded in 2011, based in Tokyo, <laughs> working across Asia. And we are working with the vision to create a world in which social, private, and public sectors work together for the social good. And another is to create a world in which people pursue and fulfill their passion and aspiration through their work. And these are our activities. <clears throat> So what we aim is to uh, create social impacts and values by bridging the business and social sector. And corporate volunteering program is one of our core businesses. And what we do is that we send um, business persons from Japanese corporations 
to NGOs and social enterprises in Asian countries and let them work as a member of the organization for three to nine months. <clears throat> and uh, for example, um, for example, we sent an engineer with 10 years of working experiences in Panasonic to one of the social enterprise in Vietnam, which produces solar products for the low income families. And the volunteer worked for the cost reduction of the product so that the products will be more affordable for the people. And another example is a researcher with five years of working experience in Ajinomoto, that's one of the food production companies in Japan. He worked for a social enterprise in Lao, which produces high uh, nutritious products using the local resources. And this volunteer worked for improving the product's nutritional values. So these are the examples of the corporate volunteering program, which we conduct. And why we do this? We are trying to achieve two things from this uh, program, which we call dual objective. One is that we would like to solve the social issues by contributing the businesses and works of the host organizations. And another is that we would like to contribute to the Japanese corporations by nurturing leaders. So what we aim is to generate the triple benefits and triple impacts. Win for the host organization that uh, uh, the volunteers contribute to their works and businesses using their skills and experiences they got from their business background. And win for the volunteer that they will get opportunities to be exposed to the new environment and culture. And at the same time, they will get the opportunities to be engaged in the business and social activities, which is different from their usual businesses. And we for the Japanese corporate as well, that they will nurture human resources who will lead their companies in the future. Uh, for the past nine years, we sent more than 200 volunteers in total from more than 40 corporations in Japan to more than 100 partner organizations in 12 countries. And since today's topic is um, urban project, I would like to introduce one of our volunteer stories who worked for the urban project in Philippines. This is about a volunteer uh, from Tokyo Marine which is one of the major insurance companies in Japan. The volunteer on the left-hand side of this picture, he has 10 years of working experience as a salesperson. And he joined this program with two purposes. One is that he wanted to be exposed to the different culture and environment. And another is that he wanted to see if he can contribute to other organizations using his skills and experiences because he wasn't confident with himself enough whether he can create values by himself outside of his company. And the organization he worked for is City Hub. City Hub is a social enterprise in Philippines which provides safe, clean, and affordable accommodation for the low-income workers. In Philippines, every opportunity such as work, education, and commercial, everything is centralized in Metro Manila. So it is said that there are more than 2 million people, 2 million domestic migrant workers who actually come all the way from rural areas to Metro Manila only for work. And those people either commute every day by spending considerable time and money for transportation or they stay in metro manila during the weekdays and they go home during the weekends however the places where they can stay in metro manila is always very poor or unsafe like this in this picture so city hub they provide 
clean, safe, and affordable place to live for them. And the volunteers' mission was to develop a strategy to increase the occupancy rate of this accommodation. During the five months of his work, first he conducted analysis and identified the issues which city have had. Among several issues, he decided to first focus on strengthening the sales part. Then he identified the target customers and he conducted more than 250 cold calls and run a sales campaign. However, things didn't go successful. So he reconsidered what is the core issue he should address. And he decided to tackle an issue which actually he was always keen to, which is the motivation of the employees. He conducted interviews with each of the members and he realized that letting the employees have stronger sense of purposes will unleash their ownership and leadership. So he decided to conduct periodical one-on-one -on -one sessions with the employees. And at the same time, he developed a handbook and conducted regular meetings with the managers in order to change their mindset. As Crossfields, we encourage the volunteer to make each of these actions by having weekly one-on-one -on -one session with him. So eventually, according to the founder of City Hub, the occupancy rate was increased from 60% to 80%. Moreover, uh, the founder said that uh, he learned the importance of each of the members having their own leadership. On the other hand, for the volunteer, he was able to develop his new skills and experiences, of course. And at the same time, he realized that having sense of purpose empowers him as a business person. He understood this through the process that uh, questioning himself, what is his purpose and why his company exists. So uh, Crossfields believe that by breaching the social sector and business sector, we can bring this kind of transformational experiences for both sides. That's what we learned in our past nine years. Then the world was affected by COVID-19, which damaged us a lot as well. So uh, due to the travel restrictions, we suspended our corporate volunteering program since last March. And we faced the risk of bankruptcy for the first time since our establishment. And we repurposed and questioned ourselves, how can we connect people under this pandemic? And how can we have continuous collaboration with the uh, partner organizations abroad? We tried to evolve and the clue was um, digital transformation. So one of the new initiatives we are now trying is to shift our corporate volunteering program to a virtual program. And we are trying to verify if we can realize our dual objective through this virtual approach. And we started to have this pilot program uh, with City Hub in order to see the feasibility of this virtual program. Under COVID-19, City Hub is providing free accommodations for those who lost their job and uh, who cannot go home due to the quarantine. City Hub is also in severe situation, but uh, they decided to continue their operation by conducting some cost reductions because they are already becoming an infrastructure for these people. So this time we matched City Hub with uh, pro bono members from one of the major international consulting firms in Japan. And the, this uh, pro bono members are working remotely to support City Hub to survive this severe situation and pivot their business model. This is uh, something we started newly, but we are aiming to achieve the dual objective from this virtual model so that we can build 
the new normal way of collaboration with our partner organizations abroad. We have just started this new challenge and journey as Crossfields, but we hope to explore the possibility of this kind of new normal way of corporate volunteering in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sayumi. This is uh, that's very interesting speech. And after a lot of presentations, you made your speech before because before you spoke about the economic effect from the volunteers. This is not only the top solution in Russia. And you started your speech with the example how the volunteers participate in economic activity of cities, of other organizations and countries. This is a very important remark from your side and how the volunteers can change the attitudes uh, to activity within pandemic. Uh, because the most important in the volunteer activity is that the volunteers um, face the particular challenges and they do not invent the problems out of their minds or maybe because they told them something based on the studies but mainly on their personal experience how what they see as the people living in cities and this is a very important for this joint development thank you very much uh, for your support for your presentation i hope that we meet each other not the last time on our facilities we're always glad to see you in russia we're always glad to exchange our experience and to partake this experience that was really helpful for us i would like to turn the floor to Maria Kopilova, the general director of company Detsky Foresight or Children Foresight, will talk mainly about the how children can become the driver of the city development. Uh, I see that your presentation failed. Hello, dear colleagues. I hope that now it should work. I hope that you can see this. Hope that you can see my presentation. This is the program of Children Foresight. We come back to the environment of the uh, children and we'll study the case, but I will try to talk more about us from the part of topic of our forum and our section. Anyway, let me get acquainted with you. What is the Children Foresight? So the Children Foresight, this is the program about the involvement of the pupils in the project of the city of life and implementation of children of the socially significant programs. And this is our motto of making the uh, project for the cities of those who should live in the city tomorrow. And we work and uh, we stick to this uh, word. And since 2012, 13 regions joined us, more than 3.5 thousand schoolmates and pupils and 400 socially important projects are implemented in our country in the program of Children Foresight. And we launch uh, our program in the city. We ask the children what they uh, need in order to live better life in the city. And children more often um, on the start um, uh, uh, a little bit not at ease because the opinion is not considered quite often but starting with the story starting with our question the local ideas appear of the changes of the change of environment with children implement in the frame of particular time of implementation of the program and generally we also have the target audiences of the program for whom it may be interesting in this or that way and let alone the uh, uh, children these are uh, cities and schools for the cities mainly making the national project of the city environment involvement of the local people into implementation of the project and the programs are equal to a big amount of uh, different bright social services this is also raising up the following the and overcoming the position of living at the expense of the 
adults, which is quite typical for the school. This is the purpose of the National Project of Education, state, federal standards, and a lot of interesting events, which also are additional resource for development of the school itself, and also orientational work of the adults and uh, and the students. It's also the experience of independent work. This is new possibility for developing inside the city and professional orientation. This is a separate and changing the city around. It's all in the frames of the activity. So this is our peculiarity that not only we work with the children, we develop this story as a separate movement and in, within the pro uh, realization. Because if uh, we move to this language of uh, moving forward in the city, this is a driver of community of local businessmen and entrepreneurs and administration so everyone is joining to all these activities because this is very interesting to look how the city and involvement of the adults and the parents it's also a possibility to attract the uh, mono cities people and also implementation of the projects when they work as a volunteers. There are a lot of examples and we need to understand that the story of involvement of the adults in the project we arrange not as administratively. On the whole, the adults at, uh, attracted in the project by children. This is their role and the, and the um, main benefit. And there are a lot of examples, one uh, which we remember. This is the project in Nizhny Tagil city which was implemented together with the company Res of Sverdlovsk. In the park of culture, park of culture for this was uh, or used to be place of gathering of all the area of all population and a couple of years ago it became the desolated place which you cannot look at without despair and children are vigoring uh, force children which are living in this area they launched the big initiative and let alone that the huge work was done on the improving and it is clear that without this, it is not possible to move forward. They have partaken their responsibility every week when this event is held and we gather to all the area and all the city to make uh, the activity at the force. In order to make it a tradition that the park should live and survive in the frames And if now you visit Nizhny Tagil, you need to visit this park and to understand how it all functions now and how the park is looking like now. Marina, thank you very much. We are running out of time. Uh, maybe the final, uh, final presentation is, now we m try to make it on another level and we launched the all russian cont uh, contest of children foresight for implementation of social entrepreneurship and social projects in the frames of the competition the children will be able to be on the high level to get the financial support of their projects and to participate in the forum one of the federal children centers you can be the partner of the competition you can have your nomination we are open for the cooperation that's why we'll be glad always to get the feedback and cooperation. Thank you very much for attention. I apologize if I have taken too much time. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. And we have one more speech. <clears throat> but before this, I would like to say that uh, children are the driver, which uh, we maybe not fully estimate or use for development of the regions. This is another vision of the future of the city. This is another idea of 
how the city can develop. Thank you very much, Maria, for your audience. I don't see Christoph de Bart in my screen, but I hope that my colleagues told me that he is with us. This is the head of innovative center of the company Airbus in Toulouse. And uh, we got acquainted with Christoph at one of the conferences in London. And it's very, uh, very inspiration example of the company which became a driver of the changes in the whole country. Christoph, good day. We are glad that you managed to join us. Christoph, the floor is yours. Hello, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. It's all fine. Yes. Okay, I will share my uh, my screen. Okay, first, uh, thank you for uh, the invitation. Uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will present you uh, what we did uh, uh, the past years uh, with the, um, the creation of the Humanity Lab. I'm not working uh, directly in the corporate uh, social volunteering, but I'm uh, an employee who wanted to bring some uh, change uh, in the company, and now I'm connected with the top management and the Airbus Foundation to 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 work on this uh, on this project um, but the best thing i could do to explain you what is the humanity lab is to tell you the story and how we came to to this in the company and to do that uh, i have to to come back uh, in uh, 1992 uh, this year was uh, 12 uh, and uh, I was diagnosed with uh, cancer at this age. And a uh, year after, they have to cut my leg. Uh, even if you think it's something that could be absolutely terrible, in fact, for me, it was the opposite. Uh, it's maybe one of the best things that happened in my life because it teach me great lessons in life. Huh? And also it teach me that the importance of the health in your life and finally uh, i feel lucky to to survive to this cancer but the problem is that when you are different people look at you and at the age of 13 when people look at me and they feel sorry for me uh, it was a, a difficult moment to to pass um, and i was afraid to be rejected because of my prosthesis, because of this difference that uh, uh, is not totally accepted. And it took me years to get out of these fears, but finally I learned other lessons during this process, and I feel that the difference finally is a chance. But the problem is that I, I completely accepted that, but the problem is that I met other people that suffering from the way people look at them. And what I wanted to do is not only accept it, but change the way people look at disability. And I wanted to, to change, in my case, the way my prosthesis look like. I don't know if you already seen a prosthesis, but it looked like that. It's not exciting to, to wear this thing. And uh, most of the people want to hide it. But what I wanted to do is to really change the, the, the aesthetic and make it visible, make it something cool that we are proud to wear and to allow anyone to afford this, this kind of aesthetic. And to do that, uh, I start to ask for help to anyone uh, around me uh, to help me. Uh, Really quickly, some people start to help me. I start in a, in a fab lab, this, this kind of thing. And with the confidence, the people that were really interested by the project, I decided to ask to my company, Airbus, uh, to help me in this project. I was sure that I could find um, competencies in my company to help me to build uh, something that will help me to change the way we look at disability. And I had the chance to meet 
uh, this place. We have uh, a place in our bus called Protospace where we can do uh, a prototyping in it. And I discuss with the leader and we start to work together uh, on this project. And uh, we build a team of volunteers and we start to work on our personal time. And this project that didn't request a lot of funding uh, because uh, 3D printing is not expensive at all. Eh? It's uh, less than uh, 100 euro of uh, 3D printing to do the test that we use for that. And after something like six months of work on personal time, we did that. And here, clearly, you can see that I don't want to, to hide my prosthesis. Uh, it's, uh, the idea was to make something that I can show that I'm proud of it. And the idea is to build a design, build a design that uh, is not expensive and that anyone can build by themselves. And, and, and thanks to that, if you build by yourself this uh, aesthetic, you, it will cost only 10 euro. So imagine the impact we can do for the, the children that uh, will have access to this kind of thing. One of the things that it, I didn't expect with this project is the people who work with me, at the end, they come to me to thank me, to thank me to all of them to participate to something uh, meaningful and that will help uh, many children uh, all over the world. And at the beginning, I didn't understand because I asking them for, for help. And at this moment, I understand something. And I understand that most of the people are looking for something meaningful in their life. And we have plenty of competence. And if you build a project where you can allow them to access easily uh, to, to help, uh, allow them to help, uh, you will find a lot of people. And at this moment, I decided to create an initiative called Humanity Lab. Uh, it's uh, with the lab that, that we have in Airbus, uh, the, the protospace. We uh, welcome all the people that are ready to help on their personal time. And the principle of the, the Humanity Lab that is now supported by the top management and the foundation of Airbus, uh, it's really simple. On one side, you have the people uh, who, who have a problem. They know exactly what is the problem. It can be an NGO. Yeah? We have this connection through the, the Airbus Foundation. It can be an individual or an institution. And on, on the other side, uh, the, they know the, the thing that they, they have, they, they know the problem but they no, don't know how to solve it technically. And on the other side, we have, you have the volunteer and all these people that want to help, but they don't know what to do and they know how to solve problems. And the goal of the Humanity Lab is to connect these two parts to find together uh, a solution to the problem using the means in the company. So some, uh, some number and we start, uh, uh, in 2018, uh, and since this moment, now we have uh, a volunteer uh, dedicated team uh, that work on this uh, on on this project. Uh, we work on our personal time. I have another job, uh, but on my personal time, I, I'm working on this uh, this project. We supported more than 10 projects. We have roughly now a little bit more than. Uh, 150 volunteers that contribute to the project. Uh, it can be technical, but also in terms of communication, everything. We have a dedicated platform now where the volunteer can connect and exchange on the, on the project. And it represents more than 3,000 hours of volunteering on the personal time of the, of the people. And here you have a map or of the, the area where the people are working and where we do some project <clears throat> with the Humanity Lab. So to give you some example of uh, what we did, I, I, I like this, uh, this project because it was really simple. It doesn't require a lot of uh, uh, resource to do that. I, I just transformed uh, a training 
a 3D print, printing training uh, that we give uh, uh, in the in the Protospace lab into something meaningful. Instead of building something that we we don't care, uh, that is a waste, we decided to build an arm for this little girl uh, named Lou, uh, eight, eight years old uh, girl. Uh, and there were nine volunteers that learned how to 3D print. And at the same time, we made this. And I can tell you that no one missed a single session of the training. And the reward was uh, huge. When you see the smile on the face of this little girl, it was an absolutely great reward. Uh, the, the idea of the Humanity Lab is to make an impact. Here, it's an impact on the life of this little girl, but also to learn something in the process. Uh, to also to engage people, to show that we can, with our competence, we also can do something for the for the planet. Uh, and quickly, we have a lot of other projects. For example, we are building uh, a wheelchair for uh, badminton in order to change again the, the way we look at uh, uh, disability, a rowing leg uh, for people that are amputee, an exoskeleton to allow um, children with cerebral palsy to walk, thanks to that. A telepresence robot for uh, the children who are stuck in an hospital bedroom. And th with a tablet, they can move the robot somewhere else. So this, pro this project are currently in development uh, on the personal uh, time. Um, we have educational. Uh, project also. Uh, uh, we also build uh, a, wing, um, a wind turbine uh, for an NGO uh, based in Peru. So a uh, whole plant here was focused on this project and worked together uh, to, to make it happen. So, and again, on their personal time. Uh, here, for example, is an exa it's an example of uh, a project that we uh, do with, the, um, with an NGO uh, called MEDER. Uh, the link was done with the Airbus Foundation. Uh, and here we build uh, a baby scale uh, to weight baby uh, to fight uh, the malnutrition. Uh, we weight uh, really precisely uh, the baby before and after uh, the breastfeeding. Uh, yeah, and during the COVID, the fact you have a, a community already uh, ready, uh, we made a lot of uh, projects. Here are some examples of the thing that we, we produce uh, during the, the COVID. And we produced some masks uh, for the medical staff, uh, some uh, face shield. And also this, uh, this unit in order to transform a decathlon mask uh, for snorkeling into a respiratory uh, equipment. Yeah, just what I want to, to highlight about this, um, this um, initiative. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of budget. I have al always this, um, this question, but in fact, most of the thing we have it already in our company um, um, here most of the thing that we use is 3d printing stuff uh, and the tool of the company to use it so with your with any company you you will have some resources that can help a project uh, somewhere in the world so very very low budget uh, one of the the task that we, that is so important is to find the project, or I would say the problem to solve, uh, and to connect uh, this project with the volunteer. And our job after is to transform this project in simple task that the volunteer can uh, can act on. And after with the engagement with the the, the motivation of the, the people, they start to work on their, in their weekend, uh, and they, they, they use a lot of their time to, to work on this project.
So this is a little bit the, the principle uh, of, the, of the Humanity Lab. Uh, we start with something that at the beginning we can, we can think it's not possible, but by doing, you, you see that we, we managed to, to do some uh, concrete uh, results. So this is, uh, this is my presentation. Uh, I hope uh, we will get something. The idea of the Humanity Lab is not to limit ourselves to Airbus. Uh, what we want is to, to open it to other companies that could uh, have some complementary uh, competencies to help us to uh, tackle different problems in the society. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Christophe. It's very inspiring story. And we spoke about many directions about how the volunteers can change the cities. But it's a beautiful final. And to say that the volunteership, it's about particular people and particular stories. And if even we talk about the problems which exist in the world, it's always the problem which starts with a particular person about whom you learn and also the volunteers in the company starts with one person who did something more let alone he did his own job and work and to do a little bit more than you could do this movement this way this gives the opportunity to change for the cities as well to change the companies to change the attitude and to move forwards the colleagues are sorry and apologize for those who look at the watches because we are running out of time we're a little bit late thank you very much for attention for all our speakers who used to be with us all this time to our spectators and watchers who joined us and this script will uh, this video script will stay many thanks for everyone and i hope that we have inspired you to change and to change the cities around goodbye for everyone thank you very much thank you